Hi everyone, Teddy Baldessar with teddybaldessar.com. And in this video, we're looking at a brand new Tissot PRX Chronograph Panda. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldessar.com as a full authorized dealer. So in this video, deep dive on this timepiece, final points of consideration at the end, but also throughout the video, if you have further questions or looking to buy the watch, a link will be in the description down below to the product page. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this new PRX chronograph. Now, since 2021 and the launch of the Tissot PRX collection, it has completely changed the way many enthusiasts look at Tissot and broadly has become one of the most important pillars in that sub $1,000 collection. Since its launch, we have seen many different iterations of the PRX family, some with automatic movements, coarse power variants, 35 millimeter options, and the chronograph that came last year. The chrono is offering a lot of what we've come to know and love about the modern PRX in a larger 42 millimeter case with a value caliber on the inside. At release, the PRX chrono was offered in either a blue dial with the white sub registers or the white dial with black sub registers and some gold accents. But now hot off the heels of some other great releases within the PRX collection, Tissot announced the first extension to the PRX chrono family with this silver and blue panda dial variant that might be my favorite from this model family yet. So first let's discuss what is new and what is new here is a dial, but it's a pretty nice looking dial if you ask me. This one leans into a primary surface executed in a shade of metallic white silver with some fine vertical grain that comes to the forefront under a macro lens. It's not a meteoric change, but rather a tasteful line extension for a design format that has already proved effective and successful for Tissot. A simple printed minute track executed in a contrasting dark shade of blue is located at the periphery and complete with printed white graduations denoting the minutes. Just within are applied linear indices in the typical faceted PRX style with each offering a small sliver of luminescent material. At center, we have stylized baton hands that are also going to carry some loom with the sub registers laying just below the plane of the central surface. As a note, the loom on these watches is functional and helps out in darker environments, but is not particularly strong falling behind some of the other watches in this price range and also other watches from Tissot. A faceted date window is located at the 430 position, giving way to a simply printed date disc beneath while also breaking up the otherwise symmetrical package. Speaking to this new dial variant, I think it looks excellent. Pairing that 1970s design aesthetic with modern levels of finishing and making more than enough room for the chronograph registers to keep this from feeling cluttered. So let's talk a little bit about the case size. So when the Parex Chrono was first unveiled, there were some people that were very split about the sizing. Most of this is going to be driven by the caliber that we'll talk about in a bit. So the case diameter measures at 42 millimeters and the lug to lug measures at 46.5 millimeters if you measure at the end of those lugs. But the added end link will expand to 53.5 millimeters millimeters if you do measure at that farthest downswept point. I would say splitting the difference between that 46 and a half and that 53 and a half is going to give you a more accurate representation of how this one will wear on wrist. To me, more like a true 42. When it comes to the verticality of the case, you are dealing with an eight millimeter thick value caliber on the inside, leading to the watch's thickness of 14.8 millimeters. And I would say on wrist still is very wearable in terms of its approach if you do have a medium sized wrist and above. Now, one of the best aspects of the PRX collection is the bracelet. With this upsized variant following suit, with an excellent bracelet that drapes to the wrist well, tapering sharply from around 29 millimeters at the top of the fixed end length to around 18 millimeters at that two button hidden deployant butterfly style clasp, familiar from the rest of the collection containing no points of micro adjustment apart from two half lengths. But keep in mind that the PRX links are smaller than some other conventional links. I own a PRX, I also have worn many and sized them to my wrist. I personally not had an issue finding an adequate fit, but for some that might swell up more than others, depending on your climate, that is something to consider. The general architecture closely follows the other modern PRX models with a sloping polished bezel, angular case, slender bevels along the length of the case, and a signed push-pull crown at three. One difference is, of course, the inclusion of large rectangular pushers that operate well in practice while pairing with the crown and screw-down case back, enabling this watch's sporty 100 meters of water resistance, solid for an automatic chronograph in any case. The finishing on the case is still well done, perhaps not as class-leading as it is in the sub-$1,000 price range that you'll find some of the same finishing techniques uh, 
being administered, but nevertheless, still on par with much of the competition. And it just goes to show how well these cases are finished for the price. Shifting our attention to the back of the watch, we have an exhibition case back offering a clear view of the Valju 7753 oscillating inside this watch. Now for under $2,000, there are essentially two different paths that you could take for a brand when looking at a mechanical chronograph caliber from Switzerland. The first that is typically less expensive is a modular chronograph system, such as the ETA 2894, and Tissot has dabbled with this in the past with some of their chronographs. The other option, and ultimately selected for the inclusion of this PRX Chrono, is a fully integrated caliber from Valju, a subsidiary of ETA, which itself is owned by the Swatch Group. The two most common movements you'll see from Valju are the 7750 with its vertically set sub-register display, and then the Valju 7753 with its horizontal register display and a 10 o'clock pusher for the date adjustment. Typically to get into the 7750, the 53 from a major Swiss brand, you're looking at well over $2,000 at a retail price and often much more and many brands, even in the luxury sector, deciding to use these as base calibers for their movements. It's a great and reliable movement and one of the best that you're going to come by given the price. This movement is also modified compared to the typical 7753 equipped with a longer power reserve of 60 hours compared to the approximate 48 hours of the base 7753, while showcasing some additional decoration in form of perlage across the central bridges, a few mirror polish components, and a matte finish rotor with some directional graining for the looks. Again, this model does require that additional pusher to change the date, so it is a tad more arduous in comparison to the typical crown operation for the date. But in general, the specs here, we're looking at 28,000 1,800 vibrations per hour, four hertz. Does feature hacking and hand winding, hacking again, stop in the second when you pull the crown to the farthest position and a power reserve of 60 hours. Also, we did test this example that we have on review here. It was running at plus five to plus nine seconds a day when testing across five different positions. So now to unpack looking at this Tissot PRX Chrono. Couple cons, then we'll look into the pros. I think the two major points of contention for people, one might be the loom. Now the loom is just, it's not, great, but also at the same time, I don't think people are necessarily looking at this watch to have this exceptional loom like it is a dive watch. Uh, just where it's applied, it's not done in a great supply, so there are some limitations with that. But the number one reason I think someone might be on the fence for this piece is just, is the size going to work for you? If you have a medium to larger size wrist, I think you'll love the way that this watch wears. It wears like a 42. It is more sports oriented with its integrated design, so you with intention understand what it's going for. So I think that allows some more feasibility for people to pull this off. That said, it is still a larger watch. So you do have to figure out where you're going to sit in terms of that type of discussion. But now shifting over to some of the big pros of this watch, and I'll start with probably the biggest one. It just comes down to the positioning of this piece. At retail pricing, you are not going to find a better position Swiss-made chronograph with an integrated chronograph caliber on the inside. Maybe there are some smaller uh, micro brands out there doing some things that are slightly less. There are some examples of that, but it is not by much. And then in terms of the design, I don't think it's going to be on the level of this PRX chronograph. They have their own history with this design language, and they've done such a nice job of integrating it within this chronograph without it making it feel so cluttered. Movement, as I mentioned, is reliable, it's robust, it has been established established for decades. And there's a reason why there really aren't many competitors really other than like Salida and what they're bringing to the table. And then also you have the finishing here of the case, still well done, not as class leading as you're going to find in that sub $1,000 price range for some of the other PRX models. Just given the competition there, it is not gonna be as fierce as here. Still though deserves a tip of the cap because it is a well done case. And the new dial, perhaps my favorite dial color yet. So who is the Tissot PRX chronograph for? Anybody with a medium to larger size wrist who wants a sports oriented chronograph at a great value pack package. That's you, probably don't need to look much further. All right guys, well thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon, that does help out the channel. And also if you're in the market for the watch featured here, we do have it available on teddybaldasar.com. Teddybaldasar.com is an authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. And how we're able to fund all the productions here, as well as on our main channel, is through selling watches on our site. So if you wanna support the content, you're in the market for a watch, we would love to have your business because it allows us to keep doing what we're doing here and we love what we do. But guys, thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.